Madagascar um, has been singled out by Conservation International as the world, one of the world's most important biodiversity hotspots. Uh, it's also one of the poorest countries in the world um, and it's ranked as the least developed country. The population of the country doubles approximately every 20 years. Now we work in the remote southwest of the country working with coastal fishing communities to enable them to manage their marine resources sustainably. And in a country that's probably one of the fifth or tenth poorest in the world, this is the most, one of the most isolated and poorest communities in the country. So, and, and these, these are communities that, that live along the coast in a very arid part of the country that rely exclusively on the marine environment for their livelihood. In actual fact, their cultural identity is in, in, inextricably linked to the sea. They're called the Vezu, or the people of the sea. So their livelihood depends entirely on the marine environment. And these are artisanal fishermen that have been using the same fishing practice for generations, hundreds of years in fact. And so their method of fishing is a very sustainable method of fishing. Blue Ventures Conservation works with these coastal communities to ensure that that remains the case, to ensure that the communities fish sustainably and ensure they protect the marine environment. So, that, so the marine environment lasts for generations to come and ensures that the fishermen always have food on the table for them and for their families. Um, and the way Blue Ventures does that is through a, a combination of strategies that involves community-based conservation programs, um, fisheries management, and also livelihood diversification. So that reduces the pressure on the coastal resources and gives the communities other means of income other than purely um, fishing, etc. Now that model of sustainability doesn't take into account the fact that the population is growing very rapidly. We estimate that the population is growing, doubling probably every 10 to 15 years. Um, and the reason for that is, we believe, almost entirely due to lack of access to health care and lack of access to health education. So in the community, in the schools, there is no health education at all and there is, there is very little access to basic family planning services. If a couple in one of our villages wants to access family planning, they would have to walk through semi-desert 50 kilometers to the nearest clinic and hope that the clinic is open on that day. Girls are having sex as young as eight, they're having children as young as 11, and sometimes having up to 20 children. The, the total fertility rate, the total fertility rate is between six and seven births per woman. Um, and the population of the region, I said, is doubling very rapidly. What that means for our conservation colleagues is that despite their best efforts, and the conservation work's going very well, despite their best efforts, the, the, the demand on those coastal resources is outstripping the supply. So the conservation team very much see the importance of enabling the community to access family planning services as a way of enabling them to slow the population growth of their region. So I'm a, a practicing doctor in the UK. I'm a general practitioner with an interest in family planning, sexual reproductive health. Um, I've also got a real passion for marine conservation. And I initially started work as the medical advisor for Blue Ventures Conservation to support the expedition and conservation staff and volunteers. And that, that work was going very well. However, because of my um, medical background and my interest in health, and reproductive health in particular, I turned my attention to the communities that we partnered with for this conservation work. And basically by asking a few simple questions, we unearthed a huge unmet need for healthcare and a huge unmet need for family planning in particular. And all of us could see the connection between that unmet need for family planning and the unsustainable pressure that was being put on, those, on the marine resources. And so it seemed, and when we asked the community, well, is this an issue for you? They said, yes, we were desperate for access to family planning. And we asked them, well, would you like us to help you meet that need? And they said, yes. So it was really pushing against an open door. So with the blessing of, family, of um, Blue Ventures Conservation, so with the blessing of the charity Blue Ventures um, and with partnership with the community, we opened the doors to the first family planning clinic in the region about four years ago. And that has now developed into a truly integrated population health environment program. And I feel very excited about this because I'm, able to, I'm now able to, to join my, my twin passions of health and conservation through this integrated program. The community were desperate for this service, it's just that nobody was able to provide it for them. So to give you an example of that, so when I first went to Madagascar, not first, when I went to Madagascar to open the first clinic in 2007, I was in the, I was in the region for two weeks. We'd already, already done some basic groundwork, but within two weeks we opened the doors to the first clinic and on the very first day, 20% of all women of reproductive age came to our clinic asking for family planning. 
and that has been the same every single village we've been, we've been to. The, the demand is there, we're just meeting that demand. The proportion of women of reproductive age who are using a reliable method of contraception has gone up more than fourfold in under four years. Now, although you cannot infer causality, we are also noticing a drop in fertility over the same period of time. So fertility has dropped by about a third since the start of the project. And I'd, I'd like to say that's at least in part because of our intervention. What we're really excited about is how the integrated approach really creates synergies that enable um, both um, health and conservation goals to be met more effectively than if we'd uh, invested in traditional um, vertical programs. So I'm really excited about that, that synergy and that integration. So what, what I'd really like to do is to, is, to, is to evaluate this integrated approach as robustly as possible, to better demonstrate to the community that this really works. And then once you've got good data behind us, then to communicate that to the international community to promote the uptake of a more integrated programming.